So for those of you out there who want to try something alternative to RetroPie on Raspberry Pi, I'm going to show you today how to set up Recal Box on Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 400. So essentially both the same machine, although the 400 has a keyboard. So what I'm going to do with this setup guide is give you everything. I'm going to show you how to download the correct image file, how to flash it. I'm even going to show you how to format your SD cards ready for Recalbox. I'm going to show you how to add some games, how to set up your controller and do other bits and pieces. So check this one out. Okay, as I always say, if you like today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like. It gets you the latest content for retro emulation as I upload it, and it also helps my channel out a great deal. So we're talking about Recal Box today, and specifically, I'm going to be downloading and doing a setup guide for Raspberry Pi 400. You can still follow this guide if you're using an older model, but just be mindful that if you're running a Raspberry Pi, say, 2 or Raspberry Pi 3, for example, performance might not be as great as that on the Raspberry Pi 4 or 400. So first of all, what we're going to do is just open up our browser and we're actually going to download Recalbox. So I'm going to leave the link in my description for this. And once we're on the official Recalbox website, what we're going to do is just head over to the download section. And we got multiple options here where we can download and install Recal Box onto. But like we know, uh, I'm going to be doing this one for the Raspberry Pi. So just click on Raspberry Pi. And as we can see, this Recal Box actually caters for the Raspberry Pi Zero, Raspberry Pi Zero Two, uh, Raspberry Pi Three, and Raspberry Pi Four to Four Hundred. So I'm going to be downloading this one just here, Raspberry Pi Four Four Hundred. So just left click, and what is recommended recommending us do is download the Raspberry Pi imager. So I'm going to just go straight to the website. And again, the link's going to be in my description for this one. And we're going to just download this. And this is the software we need to download in order to flash our image onto to plug into the Raspberry Pi. So we just downloaded that Pi imager. And this is the file you're going to get. This is a .exe. If we just double left click on this one, and if you get a little prompt come up saying about user account control, just put yes on this, that's fine. And this is the main install process for Raspberry Pi Imager. So let's just press install and give this a few seconds. And there we go, run Raspberry Pi Imager. Make sure this one's checked and just press finish. Okay, so operating system, what we're gonna do just here is just click on choose OS and let's just drag this section down. And the one we want to select here is Emulation and Games OS. Just left click on this one. Now you're going to see a few different options here, but the one we're going for is Recal Box. So left click on this one. And Operating System, there's several just here. So obviously we're going to go for the Raspberry Pi 4 400. Now, if you are running a different Raspberry Pi model, then select the appropriate one just here. So I'm going to go for the top option. Now choose storage. Now what I've got is a micro SD card plugged into my laptop for this. And what I'm going to do is just firstly show you how to format your SD card. Let's say for example, you've got another operating system on there and you want this original size back. What I recommend doing for this is just go into your search bar and typing in disk management and you'll likely see a create and format hard disk partitions just left click on this one okay so i've actually got batacera which is another front end system on my sd card i want to get rid of this one so it's disk 2 as we can see batacera what i'm going to do is right click on this here just delete volume yes And just give that a few seconds to delete and now this has gone to unallocated next i'm going to do is just left click on batacera just here right click and again delete volume yes now it's totally gone to unallocated so i'm going to right click on this again and go left click on new simple volume uh, this is going to bring up a wizard press next and i'm going to press next again 
and assign the following drive letter. So I'm going to just leave this one as drive F and press next. And file system, we're going to leave as NTFS. Press next and finish. And there we go. We have now got a new volume, which is formatted to NTFS. And we can use this one. Now, if you've got an SD card and you've got some stuff on it and you just want to get rid of it, just go to your this PC. Just right click on that SD card. Left click on format. And you can easily format it from here. So start, OK. And this is going to format. Okie dokes. So we now know that our drive is drive F and storage. So choose. And here it is just here SDSC 127.8 gigabyte mounted as drive F. Left click on this one and simply press on right and it's just going to warn you that everything on that sd card is going to be erased uh, press yes on this and that's going to take a little bit of time now this is going to write this recal box image onto our sd card so be patient for this Okay, so once that process is finished, you're going to get a little prompt saying that it's actually been installed and you can now remove the SD card from your drive. So just press continue. We can close this down and also delete the imager XC. We no longer need that one. And let's just check this is installed correctly. If we just go back here, we're going to see recall box and let's open this up and you should have three folders here and several different files. So let's take this out and I'm going to go to my Raspberry Pi now and set this up and show you how to configure your controller, add some games through networking. So I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so once you've set up your Raspberry Pi, all we're going to do next is just power it in. So as we can see, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 400. I'm going to just plug the power into the back of this one and we should first of all get a little initialization process. And this is it, this is your welcome screen. And what you need to do just now is just sit patiently and just let it do what it's got to do. It's currently installing and getting things up together for you automatically. And here we are, this is 9.1 Polestar and it's currently gonna boot up. Okay, so I'm using my PlayStation 3 controller and first thing I'm going to suggest is actually setting this up. It will work straight out of the box, but it's always the best way to start this is by actually configuring it yourself. So I'm going to press start on my PS3 controller and what I'm going to do next is just scroll down to controller settings and simply press on configure a controller, which is your top option. Now it says you're about to configure a controller, just press OK on this. And what we're going to do next when it says configure input is just literally keep your finger pressed down on the button. And here we go. This is now where we can start configuring our controller. So first thing we need to do is just press up on the D-pad and it literally walks you through what to do on this. And right at the bottom, one of the most important ones to configure is known as hotkey. So hotkey, when pressed, is going to exit you from your games that you're playing. So just be mindful of which button you're going to use to select this option. Now, next thing I'm going to suggest doing is connecting to your Wi-Fi. So by doing this, we're going to just go into main menu, scroll down to network settings. So from network settings, I'm going to enable Wi-Fi, and that's now connecting to Wi-Fi, but we're still going to have to put a password into this. Okay, so once you've connected, we're just going to put Wi-Fi password in. And once you've done that, just press enter or start on your controller and that's now going to connect you. And here we go, Wi-Fi enabled. So what I'm going to suggest doing next, once you've connected to your network, just go to quit and restart system and press yes.
So what we're going to do next is actually go back to the laptop and we're going to start adding some games through the network. So just make a note of your IP address for this part. So I'm back on the laptop now. So I've just opened up a Windows Explorer and what I'm going to do is just type in HTTP uh, and then followed by your IP address that you just found on the recall box. So once you've done this, just press enter on your keyboard and this is going to take you to recall box manager and from here we can play around with a lot of configurations but I'm going to look at adding some games so to do that through network we need to go to ROMs and this is the entirety of what recall box caters for so what I'm going to do is just put a couple of games on it so I've got a couple of games for Nintendo NES on my laptop and what I'm going to do is just scroll down on the ROM section of Recall Box Manager until I get to Nintendo NES. And here we go, Nintendo Entertainment System. So just open this one up. And so we're gonna go right to the bottom where it says Upload ROMs. And just scroll this down. And we can now drop our games into this section here, which says drop here, the ROMs to upload. So I'm gonna just highlight both of my NES games and drop them there. And very quickly, it says they have been uploaded. So technically, right now, they should be on the Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to do is head back over to my Raspberry Pi. So first of all, I'm going to just restart Recall Box. So main menu, quit, and restart system, yes. Now, if we just scroll down until we get to Nintendo NES, and just bear in mind, Recall Box comes with several different homebrew games, so that's pretty cool. But we're looking for a Nintendo NES because that's what I've just transferred across. And here we go. So under Nintendo NES, we can see my Nightmare on Elm Street game and also Adam's Family. So we got these, but we don't have any artwork. So to get some artwork, I'm going to go to Options and just go down to Main Menu. Again, so Scraper. And what we're going to do is just sign up with Screen Scraper, get a user ID and also a password. And we can then put that into here. And this is how you download artwork and preview videos through Recall Box. And this is the Screen Scraper website. I'll leave a link in my description for this one. And if you're new to Screen Scraper, it's very simple. All you need to do is just go to register, as you can see me do here. And just scroll down and you can enter in a username and also a password and you need to put your email address in and then you just simply go to send you'll get a confirmation email and that's it pretty much and then that username and passwords can then be used in recall box it's that simple And just go down to systems and make sure that say Nintendo NES is selected. Back out, scrape now. And here we go, it's now scraping artwork. And just let Recall Box reboot itself again. And this time round, we should find artwork for Nintendo NES games that I've just put in. And here we go. So we got Nightmare on Elm Street and Adam's Family. Now, Recall Box also features an option where you can sign up with retro achievements and earn retro points, that type of thing, with your game. So to do this, you need to head over to the Retro Achievements website and just put your details in, which is free. And then once you've done that, go back to Recall Box, Main Menu, and under Game Settings, you'll find right at the bottom, Retro Achievement Settings. And so turn this on and just pop in your username and password. And that should then enable your games to earn retro achievements, which is pretty cool. And this is the Retro Achievements website, so I'm going to leave the link to this one also in my description. Uh, you've got a community just here uh, with forum index, forum posts, that type of thing. We've also got an achievements section. If you go to all achievements, 
we can find different achievements which certain games uh, in your retro collection is going to be uh, compatible with. So what we need to do here is just go to register, just like Screen Scraper, uh, pop in a username, your email address, and a password, and they're going to send you a email to confirm this. And that's it. You're pretty much good to go. So just like Screen Scrapes, so just like Screen Scraper, just put in your username and password, and that's going to link up recall box with retro achievements. And we can actually download some additional games through Recal Box. If we go back to the main menu again and download contents, we got a selection just here of things to download, say Vetrex for example. If I go onto this one, it's downloaded free games from Recal Box repositories. And here we go, so we've got Vetrex complete with several different games, which is pretty cool. So free homebrew games this comes with, there's a lot on Recall Box. So for example, if I just go to main, you've got a few different games here to get you started. Uh, Sega Master System, there are several different homebrew games here. And some of these are pretty cool. Uh, looks like we got Alex Kids clone just here. Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive, there's a lot of games just here. And one I recommend is this one, I can't pronounce it. And if you fancy changing your theme for Recall Box, if we go to main menu, just scroll down to UI settings. And from here, we can go to theme and theme set. And you've got a few different theme sets just here. So currently by default, this is on Recall Box Next. I'm gonna try the middle one, Recall Box GOA2. And I'm gonna set that one as that, go back, and we need to restart, so okay. So slight bit difference, uh, things are a bit bigger. So let's take another look. And we've also got this option as well if we play around with the theme settings, which some of you might like. And that's it for my Raspberry Pi 400 or Raspberry Pi 4 or any Raspberry Pi that you're using for this setup, guys. I've also covered this system for Windows, so check that one out. That's in my other front ends playlist. And of course, if you like this video and you want to see more emulation content setup guides, then be sure to hit notifications, subscribe, and also like it. It also helps my channel out a lot. Also, check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.